that water is. Wow. Woo. You can see it merging with the glacier stream. Absolutely incredible. My goodness, what a place. Never gets old. You guys see that? That's light from the sun. I haven't seen that in days. <laughs> Man, it feels good to be out here in the sunshine and it's not raining. It has just rained pretty much nonstop every day for like five or six days. I'm trying to hold out for days like this because it is absolutely gorgeous here. And I just really want to capture more of this area before I move on. Someone asked me in the comments, you know, what settings I was using for shooting wildlife. And I'm just going to use a disclaimer now. I'm a landscape photographer, so this whole wildlife thing is very new to me. And I'm having a ton of fun, especially because First of all, if it's overcast and not raining enough to get out, I can actually take some photos of wildlife. And also, it seems like I can shoot wildlife, specifically the eagles that I've just been shooting, during the midday. Like, that's when the most light is. And if I get creative with a composition, I don't have to have perfect sunset or sunrise light. And I have a lot of fun, even during the day, trying to find different compositions of those eagles. Now, I've been shooting a lot of them, and the specific question that I got was what settings I've been using. Again, disclaimer, I'm not a wildlife photographer, so you don't necessarily have to follow what I'm about to say, but this is what I've learned shooting in the last couple weeks, specifically wildlife that is moving. So as a landscape photographer, a lot of the times, I don't really worry about the settings all that much. I usually shoot at F8, F11, or F16, almost always, ISO 100, almost always, on a tripod, and then make my shutter speed whatever I need to make it for the correct exposure of what I'm shooting. Wildlife is completely different, and the biggest one is autofocus, whereas with landscapes, I'm not really worried about the focus. I set the focus, and I'm good to go, unless I'm focus stacking or something like that. But in general, not really worried about my autofocus system or anything like that. So this has been a pretty interesting learning curve. Now, I'm going to talk about some settings for my Canon R5 here that might not apply to the camera that you have. So I'll talk about them conceptually rather than the exact settings. So. One of the first things I've done is set my shutter speed as the priority and set my ISO to auto, meaning I'm not worried about what my aperture is and I'm not worried about what my ISO is. Usually ISO is the most important thing, usually in landscapes, but as you can tell from the video from yesterday, in shooting wildlife, you can get away with pretty much whatever ISO you want and still get very, very usable images. So. The biggest thing here is that shutter is the most important thing. That's why it's called shutter priority. And unlike landscapes, it's the exact opposite, where I want a fast shutter speed so that I can capture those birds that are moving or something that's happening. Obviously, it's depending on if I'm capturing a bird in flight versus a bird just sitting there or an animal just sitting there. So I've been shooting at about 1 800th to 1 1,000th of a second for my shutter speed, letting my camera decide on the aperture and the ISO, depending on the light that's happening on that subject. And that's pretty much been my settings for the exposure triangle. Other things I've changed are instead of one shot autofocus, I'm using AI servo. And all that means is that when I'm tracking the animal, using, uh, I'm using the autofocus mode that detects an object, specifically the eye of the eagle or the eye of the animal. So I have eye detection on. I also have animal priority on, which is definitely camera specific. Your camera might not have that. And then I also have servo mode on, meaning instead of having to focus every time I press the button down, as long as it's tracking the object on my screen, it's keeping focus that entire time. So those are the settings that I've switched for that, considering, again, don't have to have any of that turned on for landscapes. Uh, the other thing that I have set is high shutter speed. So not high shutter speed, high shutter mode. It's where it takes a lot of photos as I hold the shutter button down. Whereas with landscapes, I normally have a two second timer on. Uh, again, the exact opposite where I have the highest burst mode I can possibly get on my camera set. And I have all of those settings dialed in and then I've set them to a custom shooting mode on my camera. A lot of cameras have this. It's usually one to three different custom modes. And basically I've gone in and set AI servo, ISO, auto, shutter priority, all of the stuff I just talked about in one setting so that when I'm shooting landscapes, I'll switch to manual, shoot my landscape. And then if something's happening and I, I throw this lens on and I wanna capture it, I'll switch to that setting and everything's good to go. And I'll just capture it as it's happening. I don't have to think about it. And that's how I've been shooting wildlife. 
So those are the settings I've been using. Again, disclaimer, I'm a landscape photographer, learning this as I'm going. I'm having a ton of fun, and obviously it started raining uh, as I started filming this, but it seems to pass pretty quick. I mean, you can see in the background here that light is cascading in and stuff like that. It's absolutely gorgeous. So hopefully we'll get something for sunset. I'm gonna keep looking for some wildlife, go get some food, and then try to shoot some more stuff tonight. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching, and thanks for checking out this video. Having a great time out here. I hope you are too. I raced over here to capture this rainbow that was happening and I had the 100 to 500 on and it was huge way over here then it went away and then it started to come back over here so I switched to the 16 to 35 shooting some of that with this nice reflection uh, the only caveat is that there's this industrial little spot here in the shot but it is what it is it's still really pretty I mean just look behind me absolutely gorgeous so uh, I'm gonna take a few of these Put them on the screen after I'm done talking. Maybe we'll get some more rainbows. <laughs> I'm not driving. Ryan is driving. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, not gonna get any light here for sunset, so we're gonna go up the mountain, hopefully to the pass, break through these clouds. We did it yesterday. Didn't really have any great results, so I didn't film anything. So we're hoping for better results today, considering the sunset is not gonna happen here from what we can tell. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you can't tell, it's uh, pretty overcast. There are a ton of huge mountains right here that you can't see. There's a big set of them here. Actually, yesterday I took some shots here that weren't great. That's why I wanted to come back and try to get some awesome conditions, but much worse today. So I think what we're gonna do is head back down the hill and try to take some photos of this waterfall that I also shot yesterday with some hopefully misty, moody conditions because it actually really worked for that waterfall. What's really interesting is we actually have a little bit more view distance than I did yesterday. Like I can see this glacier up here, uh, see some specific spots of this mountain back here, but there's just not enough light in here for any actual photography unless you're doing something like super moody. So back down the hill, waterfall, stay tuned. So this is not the waterfall I photographed last night. It is actually right behind me. Not that one, but it's like right over here. But because I'm not getting as much mood or atmosphere, came over here to try to shoot this one. But as you can tell, it's very flat light back here. Because of that, instead of shooting wide, I'm actually shooting telephoto and I'm zooming in on all these little details, kind of trying to find lines or 
just patterns in the water, taking about a one to half second exposure and creating those that ethereal look of a waterfall with my 70 to 200. And I'm just zooming into different spots all around here, trying to find different particular shots. So I'm gonna keep taking a few of those and then I might update you on particular compositions I found. Ryan is somewhere, let's see if I can find him. Uh, right there, taking some wide shots and uh... Oh, it's dark in here. Oh, it's like a cave. Okay, my camera can actually see better than I can. Is this my bag? Looking for my polarizer. Is this it? Aha! Polarizer. I'm coming for you. Oh, almost stepped in that puddle. Don't film and walk, kids. Cinematic. CPL. Oh yeah. All right, so for you camera people out there, we've just added a polarizer to do this. I'm gonna put on the screen non-polarized and then polarized now. It's a world of difference to get all those reflections off the rock. One second exposure, F16 to about F8, depending on the exposure time, ISO 100. Here are the images, hope you enjoy. All these little detailed shots, I'm just shooting a bunch of, right now I'm in portrait, been shooting landscape, just looking for different patterns in that water. Pretty cool, like I said, not a lot of crazy light going on, so the best thing I could do is just get intimate with my shots. Let's go see what Ryan's doing. What are you doing? Sleeping, sleeping bees. Oh, that's cute. Oh. Is that how they sleep? I don't know, but there's lots of them. I mean, they're just like all just like storm. Ross is okay. Camera. Tripod back. Get down there. Be sure I love you by someone else to end. Whoops. <sighs> back to the sleeping spot. This is like that scene in Austin Powers. Pivot. Pivot. <laughs> He's going to hate that I filmed this. <laughs> 